Stuart's steam engine collection on my kitchen table, part 4. A Stuart Models 10V built from a machine kit. Over the years I've owned and worked on many examples of double 10Vs and 10Vs, and this is the nicest one I've ever seen. It's not even fully finished, it doesn't have inlet or outlets and it doesn't have any drain cocks in it, and it really is beautiful. I'm pretty certain this is built from a machine kit, either that or the engineer who built it was exceptional. It's not even oily, yet it feels very good. The only slightly negative thing I noticed about this engine is that there was side play on the valve spindle. And when I loosened the nut and had a look, the gland wasn't packed. So what I'm doing at the moment is packing the gland using an old piece of graphited yarn. I don't like the modern stuff, it doesn't seem to be as good as it used to be. So I keep quite a lot of this old stuff in a box in a drawer. It's much denser than the stuff that they make today and it seals better. A couple of words about gland packing. It's really important not to over tighten the gland nut because if you tighten the packing too hard against the rod itself it will score the metal. Normally I would firmly tighten the gland packing nut and then back it off half a turn. I can't really run this engine until I've fitted some drain cocks so using some Loctite 542 and a pair of 3 16 by 40 threads per inch drain cocks in no time at all they fitted to the engine. Here's the first one. I'll just level it up and here's the second one going in. And I was very lucky with these drain cocks because they didn't need any washers. They aligned in the holes perfectly. The next part of the job is to make an exhaust pipe. I'm making this from a piece of quarter of an inch diameter copper tubing with the shank of a twist drill pushed down the middle of the copper to keep it in line. And here I'm using my homemade tailstock die holder. I made this a while back and I also produced a video showing how I made it and it's very useful because most of the popular sizes of die that I use are preloaded into the die stocks. And here's the finished exhaust pipe once I polished it up on the polishing spindle and I think this looks okay. Turning the engine around I'm fitting a thread adapter into the inlet. Stuart models have always used 32 threads per inch for the inlets on engines of this size. But whenever I'm piping an engine, I always use 40 threads per inch union nuts. And why is that? Well, I've always done that because I'm into locomotives and it's the general standard for locomotives. For number 10s, whether they be double 10s or single 10s, the standard is quarter by 32 threads per inch for the steam inlet and the steam outlet. It doesn't look like this engine's ever run, so I'm making sure I get oil into every moving part and it's very important to not miss any of them out, particularly the main bearings and the big end, the small end, the crosshead, the crosshead guide, the piston rod, the valve rod and the eccentrics. Via the union that I've just fitted to the steam chest, I've already injected some oil into the steam chest which will be carried to the cylinder to lubricate that. So here we go, test run number one. And it seems fine. Well, it's not quite really. As per usual, the timing is out. The compressed air is being admitted once the piston has gone well past top dead centre, as you can see here. That's not really a big problem because there is enough inertia in the flywheel to carry the crankshaft over top dead centre. But that's not the point. Late admission like this is not a good thing for a steam engine. So why not? Well, it's a good idea to admit the steam or compressed air early so it cushions the reciprocating masses. The problem is, if you set the admission too early, then the engine doesn't run very well slowly. So on small table engines like this, it's a little bit of a compromise. I've taken my medication and I've filled in the forms to accept me back at the asylum, and here I go with the Allen key to adjust the timing. I'm moving the position of the eccentric sheave which will advance the timing, so I'm moving it to the right. Not much, only a very small amount. If I move it all the way round, the engine will go in reverse. I've moved it about, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch or something, and now I'm rotating the flywheel with a little bit of compressed air going into the engine, which tells me that it's still retarded, but not as bad as it was. A bit like me, really. I think I've improved with age.
I could leave it like this because it's running particularly well at the moment, but the timing is still retarded. The admission is still late. Look, it's just after top dead centre. I want it to be either exactly on top dead centre or just a gnat's dick before. And for those of you who didn't watch the video when I explained all these strange terms, a gnat's dick is a very, very small amount. And according to one viewer, a gnat's dick is an imperial measurement. So with obsession mode, not OCD, just obsession mode, fully engaged, here we go again. And this is definitely near enough for rock and roll, it's actually near enough for rocket science. The engine will run very slowly and smoothly, and when I turn up the air pressure, the engine responds immediately. And that's it from me for this one. I'm going to run the engine in slow motion for a while. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.